should we segue into the curse? I feel cursed. By being in my presence? Oh, I want to be cursed by being in your presence. Oh, you feel cursed in your own life. The show is called The Curse. Okay. I feel like I have been the victim of a curse. Maybe a curse of my own doing. Who knows? I'm not, you know. Do you want to give us your overall rating and feeling? How do you feel about the show The Curse kind of thing? Sure. And then dive deeper into it? Originally, I'm already excited, right? I love Nathan. I'm excited to see this more serious side of him, even though I guess all of his stuff is kind of serious, right? Yeah. And, you know, the Safty brothers are wild. I think there was really strong parts in it. I really like that ability to show the fakeness, right? I liked aspects of it and like little details they would throw in where you're like, oh, that really rounds out the character in a really believable way because that is how humans act, right? Mm -hmm. But it was kind of like lost where I was like, it's engaging, but it's like, how are we going to end it? The ending, I didn't find it accessible. It leaves too much to be explained. And I get that. I don't need everything explained to me. I, I like something where it's like, oh, like, let's pick this apart and I think we see should what it lo- means. We sh- it also has to be said, I did fall asleep three times during the season yeah, finale. Yeah, you fell asleep three times and Piggy was so aggressive. The thing is, I wasn't enjoying it. I was enjoying it. I was not enjoying it. What's your rating? My overall rating? Yeah. I'm going to have to rewatch it. I think fair is fair. You should rewatch the last episode. From what I was uh, present for and awake for, yeah. I still don't like the ending. Like maybe if I rewatch it, I can understand the ending. They were going for a Sopranos meets David Lynch type ending though. Yeah, and I don't fucking like it. Finish your thing, and then I'll do my thing. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you. Thank you. I'm going to give it a s- s- 6 out of 10. Oh 7 out of 10? God. 6 or 7 Oof. out of 10. 7. 7 out of 10 for the whole show. 7 out of 10 for the whole show because the rest of it was so strong. And maybe, just maybe, after a, a rewatch, a rewatch, it might episode. be able to go up a point. I give the whole series a 9. Nathan Fielder is one of my favorite artists of the 21st century in any medium. I feel like... The show is really heavy handed with like the themes that they wanted to assess with gentrification and class and all this stuff. And I feel like they handled those topics with grace and humor. And I feel like the ending is a metaphor for like his life is upended, much like the lives of the common folk that he his character Asher deals with on a day to day basis as these white rich people move into a poor indigenous community and gentrify it with their eco-friendly housing designs and such with their HGTV reality TV show. So it's a show within a show within a show, which is also a thing that Nathan does a lot and I love. And I feel like it blends the horror, the Safdie brothers, similar to Jordan Peele, where it's like dark comedy, but it's also horror, meets Nathan Fielder's style. And I feel like their writing styles together were beautiful. And I really hope that they collaborate on more work together in the future. And I also loved the collaboration between Winotrix Point Never and uh, John Medeski. I mean, Jesus Christ, what a like match made in heaven. So I think on that level, it's masterful. The cinematography, the music, the way the music works with the imagery, the metaphors, the like, I feel like on so many levels, this show is um, it's rolling on multiple cylinders. Sometimes art isn't accessible right away. And also Nathan makes the point like sometimes you have to go to extreme lengths to make your point. And I think if we rewatch the show from the beginning, we would see all these Easter eggs all over the place. You made a good point last night about the micro penises. Yeah. And how that represents it's a mix of white savior complex with um, inferiority. In- inferiority and in- yeah. There's points made in there. I think the part that makes it pretentious, and I think the reason why at the end where I'm like, ugh, uh, giving it a lower rating, okay. is because it's making all these points, right? You're you're making all these metaphors, but you're making it as the privileged person. You're still the person with the upper hand, and that person is always the person who gets to do the storytelling anyway. I think it's very meta that the show, right, is like, them trying to like it's a statement be woke. about itself. It's a statement about itself, and I and I see that. But that's why he's such a brilliant artist because it's a never-ending, meta fucking, uh, uh, upward, um, spiral dynamic. Yeah, I see that, right? But it's fucking pretentious. I think it's brilliant. It is brilliant. They're not mutually exclusive. Nine out of ten. The curse came to a close with a what the fuck for the ages. Wrapping up its saga of reality TV ambition and exploitation, personal and professional duplicitousness and scheming and marital dysfunction and strife with a finale that was nothing short of out of this world. Inspiring gasps, head scratches and incredulous exclamations in equal measure. It was a turn of events that no one on the planet saw coming. It's a finale that proved to be a fittingly mysterious and unnerving way to conclude a story rooted in the fraught interplay 
between the internal and the external. Right. That's a good point. I'm just going to skip ahead here. Whitney, which is Emma Stone's character, and Asher, played by Nathan Fielder, suffering humiliation as they're largely ignored during their remote video appearance on Rachel Ray's Rachel. I, I think that's a good point that we haven't brought up yet. The fact that she was pregnant and Rachel Ray doesn't bring up the fact that she's pregnant was really awkward. Mm -hmm. And like the sound woman doesn't give a shit about them. I also like how they hired real people. Like, that sound woman is a real sound woman. Oh, yeah. Vin Vincent Pastor from The Sopranos flirts with Rachel and sings terribly. It's not a coincidence that he chose Vincent Pastor from The Sopranos. Because it's the whole ending is supposed to be It's supposed to be... Sopranos, David Lynch. Exactly. It's supposed to be an allusion to, like, it's to the works it's influenced by. And I even pointed out at some point, there was, like, a music section. It was during uh, the beginning of Emma Stone giving birth, and she's freaking out. Mm -hmm. The music was so... So Lynchian. That's exactly the kind of music that you would hear in Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. And I've seen direct comparisons of this show to Twin Peaks too. And I think that uh, the music is another way to draw that illusion. It's very interesting. Asher confesses that he's a liar and terrible person and that he, rather than any curse, is the cause of their problems. Moreover, despite Whitney clearly rejecting him, he refuses to abandon her. And in the comment that appears to in, uh, instigate the finale's anti-gravity craziness, he asserts, I know you, baby, and if you didn't want to be with me and I actually truly felt that, I'd be gone. You wouldn't have said that. I would feel it and I would disappear. In that moment, that sounds like another of Ashy's cocky yet sniveling declarations of spousal devotion. And Whitney's ensuing tears come from her eyes, a despondent realization that despite disliking Asher, she's an egomaniac, powerless to resist such undying adoration. BP so BPD true. in an art. Him saying that if he didn't, if he, you know, he would leave. Yeah. He knows. It, his delusion. He knows that, that she she's hates, the person. that she doesn't actually love him. Yeah. He doesn't want to believe that. Because when you love a narcissist. You yeah. Know. Given what transpires, Asher's pronouncement comes to resemble something more monumental. Asher cursing himself by giving Whitney the ability to make him vanish by simply wishing inside without articulating it to not be together anymore. Oh. I would just disappear. That is so deep, and I didn't even see that. That declaration. He declares it, and then he does disappear. Because that's the curse. That's the curse. See? I didn't even see it on that level. That's why it's a brilliant show. You still give it a seven? I mean, that's brilliant. It's above my pay grade, because I don't, you know, I, I'm a bit of a Luddite when it comes to TV and movies. I need you to explain some things. Not mm -hmm. everything, but uh, some things are obvious to me, but other things um, I'm a little slow on. It's not slow on. It's just remembering all the details. Keeping you don't track of you don't, characters, you that's what I have a hard time You don't time remember with. all the details of yeah, the story. Yeah, that's true. Well, I thought that was <clears> a good <throat> analysis. Yeah, I still give it a seven. I can respect that something is art and not like it. Is it artistic? Is it brilliant? Sure. Do I like it? No. It seems like the public mostly agrees with you. 76 on Metacritic and 7.1 according to user ratings on IMDb. So I think it can be brilliant, but I that's why I think it's pretentious. Uh, okay. They can they can both exist. All right, fine. It has a ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes though, which is closer to my opinion. Wow, forty percent audience score. Wow. You know how unusual this is, right? No. On Rotten Tomatoes, for the critics and the readers to be this divergent, this is extreme. I'll read the top two bad reviews. One and a half. The curse forces you to potter in this modern media question is cringe entertainment. Is the gravity-like urge to look away akin to laughing till your belly hurts or crying tears of joy? Your answer will determine your view of the curse. I mean, I don't even think that's a good take. One star. This show is thoroughly repulsive. I can't remember hating a show this much, especially one with a first-rate cast. The acting was fine. It was the writing and execution that was so bad. I know it was meant to be dark, but it was dark and nasty for the sake of being shocking. I need someone to root for, and every character is a horrible person. Scenarios are implausible and contrived. Five stars. This was an amazing show. Do you want me to go to the half a star? Mm -hmm. Watched all 10 episodes. I'm still trying to figure out what this show is about. I can't believe I wasted 10 hours of my life. What was the show about? I don't get it. Okay, oh, well, cool. that's... Okay, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. All right, that's enough. Closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. I wanted to like it. I understand that you have to go to great lengths to get your art across. And I just think that that energy could be used in a more productive manner instead of making some art for the sake of art. But I get it. Whatever. There is no right. There is no wrong. All right. All right. All right there it is, folks.